Oh boy, hello guys. Invisalign in, so excuse the lisp. Um, I kind of just wanted to hop on before this video started because I wanted to take a second to kind of explain how, can I help you? I'll give you that. Sometimes she literally just wants love. Should we tell them what's up? Listen, I want to be way more focused on room makeovers, but I kind of half asked a lot of them last year, and that is not what I want to do in 2020. There will be videos like this in between, whether it's me trying something new with you guys, like I am today with the epoxy resin art, or it might just be a little, not a little build, but it might be like a one off project based build. Hey girl. So as I was saying, um, it might not necessarily be a room makeover every single week. Trust me, I am trying. You guys are getting three major ones this month alone, but it's just not feasible for me as a one woman show doing absolutely everything by myself to produce a room makeover at the quality that I want to. I'm very much so about quality versus quantity. Last year, I feel like I got kind of lost in the abyss of just the hustle and bustle. And I really just want to focus on my craft and hone into it, but also really teach other people this year. That being said, today we are literally just gonna have some fun. We're not gonna be building anything. I just wanna use some pigment and epoxy and mess around with it, see what we can do, because I do wanna explore doing larger epoxy projects. But I figured why not start small, start somewhere where everyone else can kind of do it as well and they can see the genuine process and how epoxy really is really, it's very easy to work with, I learned through this process. If you guys aren't aware, I am a part of the perspective program with Home Depot, which this is in partnership with. It's been happening since 2019, last year. I act like that was so long ago. I hope that you guys like it. I know it's very different and mellow. I hope you guys bear with me with the easier, more mellow projects because hopefully it gives you a little bit inspiration and motivation to just dive into any part of DIY. Uh, but I will be done talking now and let's just get into working with epoxy for the first time. Prepping for the project really didn't take that much because I just turned to Amazon and typed in whatever I was really looking for to mess around with. I've linked everything down below, including the DIY inspiration. These molds I had to get, I've been eyeing them for forever. And once I started to work with epoxy, that was the first thing in my shopping cart. So they're just different kind of coaster molds that are shaped like geodes and agate. Is that how you say it? I don't even know. But we're just gonna use one of the molds today. As far as pigment goes, I did the same thing, just went on Amazon, but I I wish I would have taken a little bit more time to read the reviews because those liquid colors, they ended up not being so good or the colors that they were online. If you guys have any recommendations working with epoxy or different colors that you suggest, please drop them in the comments down below. But moving on, I didn't want to build anything because I wanted this pretty doable for anybody to pick it up. I thrifted this trio of trays at my local Goodwill for $5 and I just thought this would be a good little starter kit and I wouldn't feel bad if I ruined any of them. I listed everything in detail down below what I'm using throughout this entire tutorial, but basically you need gloves, disposable cup, popsicle sticks, toothpicks, and I am going to be testing out a couple different sources of moving the epoxy around, but to finish it off, I'm gonna be using this Burnzomatic Max Heat Torch Kit. Now you'll see I'll be using a hair dryer and a heat gun, but the torch really just pops all those air bubbles right out of the epoxy, making it silky smooth and just perfection. It has a cast aluminum body construction for durability. It's pressure regulated for cold temperatures and inverted use, and it also has a limited lifetime warranty. This is way easier to use and not as intimidating as it may seem. It has an auto start and stop ignition that easily ignites and extinguishes the flame within seconds. Like you genuinely don't have to trip out. I was a little bit nervous using it, but I quickly became comfortable once I started to realize it's literally the push of a button. I don't think you necessarily need these for the smaller projects, but I'm happy to have them on hand for the larger epoxy projects I'm doing. If you want to pick one up, I linked it down below in the description box for you, but we're going to move on to prepping the space to make sure we can pour the epoxy. Clearly now I've had my coffee and my voice is picking up a bit and I don't know what Rachel pre-coffee was saying but I didn't really prep the space for epoxy I just put down a painter's tarp you can definitely DIY your own cutting boards but for the sake of this tutorial I wanted to present it in a way that anybody can do you can thrift them or pick them up from home goods like I did here and then you can customize them with different colored epoxy for the epoxy itself I mixed equal parts a and B and then I added the colors that I wanted obviously for the ocean type of vibe that we wanted to get once I had the colors mixed to my liking I just did a different variety of blues and then one specifically a pure white to add that foam of the waves um, I just started pouring at random I really thought there was going to be 
a method to the madness but as i watched the tutorials that i linked down below for you i honestly picked up the vibe that if you just don't think about it it will end up looking great regardless so i didn't put too much pressure on myself and just started to pour and smooth out over the edges to ensure that you know the excess is pouring over so it looks like it goes all the way I went about making this mini ocean epoxy, if you will, is start with the deepest blue towards the back and then lighten up as you go towards the front. And wherever you mix those colors, you just add a white line directly across and make it look very natural. So when it goes to kind of, you know, you go in with your heat gun, it starts to kind of blow over each layer, creating a wave. That's how I thought about it. I did want to show you a couple of other methods that I tried besides just the torch to move the epoxy around because the torch itself it, like you wouldn't necessarily move it with that it would burn it if you held the heat there too long so I tried a hair blow dryer which I just couldn't control the strength and I felt like I definitely was pushing the epoxy in like the opposite direction I was intending it to go so I switched out to my heat gun which I had on hand because I used to emboss things and that was a much better option. I definitely had the too much gene. I kept touching it over and over and over. So I just decided to hit it with the torch to pop all those air bubbles. But then I went super heavy towards the end of the handle and basically burnt off the epoxy right there. But just because I have the too much gene, I stepped back and let it dry overnight for 24 hours before I decided to plate it and see what it looked like as a cutting board with this detail on it. Doing this gave me an idea to be able to execute that onto larger canvases potentially to do ocean artwork, you know, for people that have that type of vibe in their house. But also, this is the perfect miniature snack board that I literally demolished while editing this video. <laughs> This next cutting board is definitely a flop. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking when I thought taping it and then not properly pressing it down and sealing it. Rachel Metz, hello, are we a carpenter? Or are we just not a human, not knowing how to tape something down? I thought I was smoothing it out. Apparently, I wasn't because when I'm looking back at this footage, I can't believe I didn't notice this when I was pouring the epoxy, but it's lift up on the side. I need it to be sealed down too so this is a total just on me <laughs> mess up progression of the diys in this tutorial are honestly how i did them in my workshop i started with the cutting boards because it's just like a small work surface it's a great starter kit in my opinion and for me it definitely gave me a good confidence boost moving forward and also understanding what wasn't working i honestly didn't even want to put this in because it was such a fail in my opinion you see me just genuinely not knowing what i'm doing but i thought it would be nice to show this to you because this is really the process of DIYing. I sat there and poured black on it with the intention of it being a solid black and then I quickly learned that my problem was too much heat with the torch and I should have turned it down. So I went in with a metallic accent in my heat gun. I started swirling it around and it just ended up becoming a big blob of the same color and then I'm just blowing more epoxy off of it. So the reason I'm showing this is to walk you through me learning multiple lessons with this just being a small test like sample kit as I mentioned before. So it doesn't feel like I'm wasting my time all day on a DIY. It's just kind of getting my feet wet to boost my confidence to move to something larger. When this dried, I definitely realized I could have done a flood coat, but again, I wanted to not just cover up my mistakes and show you guys completely <laughs> just what I did because right here made me laugh so hard. When I started to peel it back, I was like, Rachel, what were you even thinking right now? How did we even just handle that like that? Something else I didn't take account of is the fact that it drips, Rachel, it drips. So when it dries, it will dry the cutting board uneven. Those were easy to get off. You can actually just chisel them right off or heat them down. But I moved right along to pouring some white epoxy into the base of that thrifted coffee tray just to see what else I could do because now these cutting boards were getting me irritated. I wanted to do something bigger, so that's why I moved to the tray instead of doing the coasters because the coasters look a little intimidating because you have to make them look like geodes, but we'll get there. I poured white as the base and then I just decided to kind of mimic the bar top that I did with spray paint with black epoxy on the corners of this tray. You can tell my lines are different on the left hand side and the right. The left is because I went slowly and I highly recommend doing what I did on the right and it's just going quick and fast so it makes more of a straight line versus like a shakier line because when I used my heat gun on the left lines, they didn't blow out as nicely as the right. 
I also noticed that I'm dragging the epoxy completely on the edges of the tray, but that is because I just easily chiseled it off the sides of the coffee tray. I definitely would have taped it, but your girl had no patience. I wanted to keep moving and grooving and seeing what techniques I could do because I needed some DIY therapy quick with this session. I continue to try to make that like my bar top, but it just really wasn't working in my favor. And I also hit it with the torch such like at such a high heat that it burnt it. So that is a no, no. Even though I had different intentions for this tray, uh, when I noticed that after I burnt it and it dispersed the coloring like that, I took advantage of it and went in with my heat gun to kind of move those lines where I wanted them. This is where I got a little crazy because you can see the yellowing from where I burnt it. I'm going to start to incorporate gold at some point just in the corners to kind of make it look like I did that on purpose. <laughs> We ended up here. I don't know how, I don't know what happened, but we are, we're here. We want to make that yellow look a little bit more natural. So we're hitting it with that gold in the corners, just a little bit, just to make it look like, no, I didn't light that handle to the right where that heat gun is right now. And that's why it's dark brown on fire. I didn't do that. That's natural. Even though I had no clue what I was doing with this tray and I didn't tape it off like a normal person would and I didn't completely burn it, uh, all in all, it looked pretty badass for my first time mixing colored epoxy in my opinion. I wanted these coasters to go with my cousin's guest room office that I'm going to be releasing soon and she has an emerald green couch. When I mixed the quote unquote green into the epoxy it was this color so I had to work with what I had which was this green powder and it wasn't like this deep emerald green that I originally intended for these things but I made do not only have I linked the molds down below for you but the company also made a tutorial themselves that had a much better outcome than I did I just kind of followed the same color process of accent colors versus where you're putting lighter colors and darker colors I didn't copy them obviously once you check out their tutorial and I wish I did because theirs turned out so much better. <laughs> For each of these coasters, I felt like they kind of got worse and worse, but I still pushed through. I didn't want to give up. I wanted to see how they looked dried with a little bit of gold leaf on them to see if it could spruce them up a little bit. Even though the colorway didn't turn out how I wanted them to, it was very satisfying and relaxing working with these epoxy coasters and just seeing how the colors mesh together. I let them dry overnight, popped them out the next morning, and then went ahead and gold leafed the edges. Hear me out. Yes, I know. The two with the holes kind of look like scrambled eggs and a rotten egg or green eggs in ham. I get it. But that's not the reason... <laughs> We are here, people. It is because, look, when you put on the tray that we did, when you style it, when you step back, even, you know, if it was kind of a fail, the coasters, now we know not to do that colorway. It really does look gorgeous, even when it's a mess up. So don't be afraid to dive into epoxy. By this time, I think I kind of have a better grip on color schemes, on how to pour the colors, how to mix the colors, because we're about, what, four projects in by this point. So for this one, I kind of wanted to add some texture because I saw a pin that I linked down below for you. It had some crystals in the corner of a coffee tray to mimic the middle of a crystal. I'm assuming I didn't have any on hand, so I just crushed up some like old rocks that I, like clear craft rocks that I had on hand from Michaels and put those in the corner with hot glue. Once I had those set, I went in with the lightest blue that I could make. It was basically clear and I started to fill the outside lip that met those rocks that we just added. I then took my deepest blue that I made, not a metallic blue, and went right outside that clear on each side and then one down the middle. I went in with my metallic blue and just started to trim the dark blue we just poured. And once everything started to kind of spread out, I filled the negative spaces with white and started to mix everything together with a popsicle stick to get an idea of how it was going to blend or if I wanted to pull a color a specific way. And yeah, like that gold leaf from the wind that picked it up off of the floor and just flew it into the tray. That happens too. Don't trip. Just pull it out quote unquote geode look I saw on Pinterest somebody using a popsicle stick to wiggle the lines and mesh the color a little bit more prior to hitting it with like the heat gun and moving around the colors so that's why you see me swirling it here and I found that when you are using a heat gun if you just kind of put it directly on top of the layer of the one color you're going across almost like you 
pour how you poured the epoxy that gives you the most quote unquote crystal like look because it kind of just spreads that layer out in both directions evenly. To give that white some more definition, I went in with my metallic epoxy and outlined each section of white to enhance it. And don't be afraid um, about working with this for a little bit. The stone coat countertop epoxy that I'm using, actually, you can work with it from, I believe it's anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes, depending on you know your weather conditions and whatnot. So even though it's something that does dry, you have a decent amount to work with before you hit it with the torch right here to get all those air bubbles up and start to seal it up. I added gold in between layers just because I felt like it was too much like the cutting board we originally did with this ocean vibe to it. But I am making this for my friend that lives in Long Beach who loves the ocean. Her favorite color is blue. She loves crystals and I just thought this would be like a fun little decor piece as a late Christmas present for her. Um, and I think just adding the gold also chics it up a little bit. I let this dry overnight and the next morning I did a flood coat. Whoa, this is not the next morning. I'm torching it one more time after I added the gold, which you need to do in between layers of epoxy to get all those air bubbles out. Now it is dry. You can see that I went in with a very fine grit sandpaper. I went in with a 320 and scuffed up the surface. It looks like I'm ruining it. You're not. You're going to wipe that down clean, mix equal parts of your A and B to make your epoxy. Pour that right on top and repeat the process with your torch to pop all those air bubbles. This is going to give this like protective layer. So if she is going to be using this tray and she's putting things directly on top of it, it's not hitting that color coat of like that crystal that we did. Basically, it's hitting the clear coat, which will let that pattern just last a lot longer. This also adds a ton of depth, in my opinion. While this is the last DIY of this video and this little session that I had playing with epoxy, I personally think it was my best just because I started to learn how to pour the color, how they meshed a little bit better and using the heat gun and the torch, not burning it and understanding how to heat control and whatnot. I wanted to show you this process because this is me gearing up for a larger scale project. This is exactly what I do when I want to learn a technique prior to like spending a lot of money on a large scale project that I might not necessarily execute the way that I could if I had just a little bit of practice under my belt. So I hope this gave you inspiration just to mess around a little bit, try something new. If you guys want to check out the torch, I linked it down below for you. But if you're a real one and you lasted this entire video, because I know this is a 20 minute video about epoxy, let me show you two rooms that I'm making over right now in our house that I cannot wait to share the end result with you. I can't make English right now. What? That wasn't even a sentence. I hate when YouTubers say they're working on stuff and they're like, oh, I can't show you. I can show you guys. Number one, check that out. That, my friends, is because I did not use removable wallpaper. I'm going to be redoing my office. This will not be happening until February, but that's what I'm dealing with. Thank God I only wallpapered one wall, but this is going to be a pain and a half to get off. The other project we're working on, I don't want to show you too much because I already kind of laid it out, but you can see that I removed the shelving in Paul's office because you guys are getting a masculine and moody proper office makeover because the other one was very budget. When I did Paul's office the first time, it was very budget because I had literally like no money. I had to basically have him buy what I needed. And now that your girl is stacking her paper correctly, I am able to invest in different rooms. And this one I wanted to kind of kick off the year for him nice and strong because he'll be finishing up his Netflix series that he's currently shooting. So that ends in January. So I kind of want him to come home to like a legit office, but that's not today's video. And I'm also working on my cousin Michaela's office and my friend Holly's master bedroom. This is all at the same time. So this is why you're getting a little bit of a mellow DIY today. So bear with me guys.